Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to our video lecture on Chapter 16, Section 10, on acid-base behavior and chemical structure. Now, this video is going to focus on primarily acid strength. Acid strength first and foremost in terms of how acids and bases behave, and then acid strength based on chemical structure of different molecules. Now, there are three primary factors that affect acid strength. The first is looking at what the molecule is made of, how it's arranged. So the mol when molecules contain hydrogen, they will act as proton donors, which are acids, only if that hydrogen is bonded to a substance and that bond is polarized, meaning this is a polar molecule. If it's a polar molecule where one side, the hydrogen is partially positive and the other side is partially negative, then you have an acid. For example, HCl, chlorine is more electronegative, it pulls electrons towards it, becoming partially negative, hydrogen partially positive, thus it's setting up a parameter where that proton can be donated. That's an acid. Now, if it's an ionic hydride, an example of that is NaH. We haven't dealt with many ionic hydrides, it's not something that comes up very often in our class, but they do exist. So if we have an ionic hydride, the opposite is true. In this case, sodium is your cation, it's positive. Hydrogen is your anion, it's negative. And it'll behave as a proton acceptor in the H will. So it behaves as a base in that case. Now let's say you don't have either of those extremes, you know, polarized or an ionic compound, but let's say you have something that is nonpolar. If you have a nonpolar HX bond, such as hydrogen and carbon, those are very close in their electronegativity values, thus it's not going to form a majorly polar bond. But in the molecule, CH4, these are a tetra, this is a tetrahedral molecule, it's a nonpolar molecule, thus, as a nonpolar molecule, it's not going to produce acidic or basic solution. The second factor in acid strength is bond strength. So taking the same format, H bonded with X, X is, you know, you know, some molecule, so sorry, some atom. So bond strength. The stronger bonds are, <clears throat> the stronger bonds are less easily broken down than weaker ones. And that's, you know, common sense. Stronger bonds takes more energy to break them down than weaker ones. An example would be HF. So this is an acid, polarized. It is the most polar of the halide acids, meaning group 7a, all your halogens. It's the most polar of them because fluorine is most electronegative. Bond strength increases as you move up the group, as you move up. So it's been studied that HI, you know, towards the bottom, it's bond strength, 299 kilojoules per mole. Go up one to bromine, 366. Up another to chlorine, 431. Up to the top to fluorine, 567 kilojoules per mole. So what this means, that the stronger the bond strength, the harder it is to break, thus we have less dissociation, meaning we have a weaker acid as we go up the periodic table. Now our third factor, is so when we're looking at the conjugates here, conjugate base in particular, so the stability of your conjugate base, when HX, when that molecule, ionizes in water, it's going to form your conjugate base X minus. The greater stability of your conjugate base, X minus, the stronger the acid. We've talked about that before, just reiterating that that is a factor in acid strength. Going a little further, looking at acid strength, looking at the periodic table, we're just looking at the right side of the periodic table with the group K elements. As you go from left to right, there's an increase in acid strength. So group 3A all the way up through 8A. I know it's a small print, guys, but you can zoom in if you need to to see this. As you go down the periodic table, there's an increase in acid strength. Now if we review some of those points we just made in the last board, CH4 and SiH4 are nonpolar molecules, thus they are not considered acidic. So that's you know zero. It's not you know not applicable here. 
NH3 and PH3. N and P are electronegative slightly, but not as much as these over here. And their bond strength differs as much, differs as well, excuse me. These are going to be characterized as weak bases. I'm putting WB here for weak bases. H2O, we know, can be a weak base or a weak acid. Example terra. H2S here, a weak acid. HF, a weak acid. HCl, Sa, strong acid. As I go down from here, I get stronger acids. Just know the general trend of acid strength. Now, acid strength also depends on the chemical structure of a compound or a substance as well. For example, we have oxy acids. An oxy acid is an acid in which the OH group and possibly even additional oxygens are bonded to a central atom. For example, sulfuric acid, H2SO4. The H's are the protons that can be donated. Here's my Lewis structure here. These H's can be donated. So for oxy acids, as the strength increases with the essential atom's electronegativity. So the more electronegative the essential atom, the stronger the acid. Additionally, the strength of an acid increases as additional electronegative atoms bond to the central atom. I have an example, example of that here at the bottom. Let's look at hypochlorous acid. That's just your central atom's chlorine. You have one oxygen attached. Your case of A, 3 times 10 to the negative 8. Chlorous acid. I add one more additional oxygen, one more additional electronegative atom. My central atom is chlorine. I add one more oxygen onto it, and my case of A value is 1.1 times 10 to the negative second. It's gotten stronger. Or meaning it's dissociated more as that number's higher. Chloric acid, I add another oxygen around my central atom. That associates with a very large Ka. We just say it's a strong acid. It's one of our seven. And perchloric acid, also one of our seven. Add another oxygen there. It becomes even stronger. So that's one way you can differentiate between two acids you know are strong. I said, which one, is these, which one of these is stronger? You know, the one with the more electronegative atoms surrounding it is going to be the stronger acid. And now another chemical structure to look at in terms of acids are carboxylic acids. We talked about these in class already. And these are the ones that have a functional group called a carboxyl group. For example, acetic acid is this here, CH3COOH. And the COOH portion here is your carboxyl group. And this hydrogen here is your polarized hydrogen that can be donated. Another example, formic acid. Here's your this is HCOOH group. This is your carboxyl group. And benzoic acid. You know, some of you guys may take uh, different face washes or acne medications and they'll have these benzoic acids in them. This is what you're using. It's a carboxylic acid. And this group here is your carboxyl group. And again, this is the H that's polarized, but it's polarized due to these oxygens here and here. These oxygens are electron withdrawing atoms. They're going to pull electrons towards themselves as a whole. Um, so they decrease the electron density away from the H, making it more polarized and can be taken away. Now, looking at the conjugate bases of carboxy carboxylic acids. The conjugate base of a carboxylic acid is called a carboxylate. Notice the A-T-E ending. So it's called a carboxylate anion. And they are stable because they exhibit a characteristic called resonance. And we talked about resonance before in the previous chapter. Resonance is the ability of a substance. This is a, you know, the uh, conjugate base. The proton is now gone. These electrons can shift around within the molecule here. 
the electrons go down here, and these, this bond breaks, and the electrons go up there, giving you this. It's the same molecule, however, my electrons have just shifted around. This adds stability. So this is a resonance structure. These are resonance structures of one another. So if a substance can go through resonance, it is more stable. It's a more stable conjugate base. So we've talked about stability of conjugate bases. The stronger the base, and you can determine uh, which direction equilibrium is going to lie to. And this substance is called acetate. We've seen that on our polyatomic chart, you know, very often, so many times. This is what it actually is. It comes from carboxylic acid, and it's a carboxylate here. ATE ending, ATE ending. That's the connection. Gentlemen, take notes. Adios.